What is good? We're back. And this is the real last show before the playoffs. The other one was just the show before the last show. (laughs) But uh, we're going to talk a little dynasty trades and kind of some theories behind some real dynasty trades. And then we're going to take some questions from the Patreon members. That's why you need to be a $5 hour. Uh, I ended the last show before I could say I had in big letters, but by Roma Dunze, if anybody's selling, uh, gonna be gonna be just fine. Let's get you get you some Rome. Uh, but we are gonna talk some draft picks. Like I said, some some draft trades. If you're a contender, your thought process, a little bit of theory in there, and then we're gonna take a couple of questions and talk about those at the end as well. Since you know we was our last last two row of, of probably being able to give you like for real trade advice and some thoughts on it because trade deadlines will most likely all close in, in the playoffs for the most part. So. Uh, we'll be switching gears a little bit next week, but we got all sorts of stuff for your pleasure, locked and loaded for future chats of players, values, drafts, all sorts of stuff uh, mm-hmm. in the $5 holler and the free Discord. And of course, for your pleasure on the pod and the, and the YouTubes. So, you know, we, we just, like I said, we have some scenarios here where teams of ours have were, were go, heading into the playoffs, maybe wanting to add and feel out, uh, you know, what it's going to cost to add said players or picks going forward. So we're going to start there and then we'll take some, some questions that we got from the Patreon members. So big co, did you have some trades that you wanted to kind of discuss here about the hows and what's and ins and outs of the thought process behind what you're sending, how you're sending and, and how you're perceiving it? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the beauty of the stretch run of the fantasy football playoffs or, you know, the ending of the regular season, it just makes it so intense. I was this Sunday, you know, when a random, when this player or that player does or does not get a touchdown in week seven, whatever, you know, you got half the season to go. When your player, when your guy gets a touchdown in week 13 and you're fighting for a playoff spot or you're at the top, you're try, fighting for that first round bye. It's so intense. It's everything. That's it's why we play the game. It's so much fun. I like when people update their players nicknames and they put how much they want in that player's name like the <laughs> you know, in a late first or an early second for Travis Etienne gets popped up. It's a tight end 2 point premium, right? So it when every time the tight ends catch the ball is 2 points. I know that's a little bit aggressive for some people out there. 1.5 is kind of hopefully become, becoming the normal because it makes it more fun. Two point, yes, is a little bit more aggressive, but I got a, I got a really good team in this league, and I don't have much for running back. Settle down. Open up to the tight end premium. The more yeah, the better. Yeah, it's fun. The more the better. It's fun. It, it definitely spreads out the wealth a little bit. And in and, and two point, that Casey and I, we put out a video before the season started and showing what it does. And in two point, it not only stri- spreads out the wealth, it literally pushes the tight end to basically the top of the value chart. So you have to learn the rules and react that way. But anyway, so somebody in the league put four or five, maybe six or seven players on the trade block. And I'm looking and I'm like, what, you know, Travis Etienne's up there. And this was a league where basically it's two years. This is our second year of the league. And I, uh, it was an auction and I bought a couple of players that were awesome. And I got, I bought a couple of players that were not awesome. And my strategy going in was to buy a couple of players that I could trade right before the season started for draft picks. And so I traded away some players and ended up being awesome. So I didn't have the best team. I had some fun players, but I, it really wasn't going like I wanted it to. And so I said, all right, I got to really, you know, maximize these draft picks and rebuild this squad after one year. And one of the biggest reasons that it really hurt was because I spent a decent amount of money. It was two point, you know, two uh, super flex. I spent a decent amount of money on Daniel Jones and that didn't go, that didn't go well at all. So that hurt a lot. But uh, anyway, so I, the, Travis Etienne's nickname becomes late first, early second. So I send a second round pick for Tra- Travis Etienne last week and he rejects it and asks for a first round pick. And I reject it because I don't want to get my first round pick. But then a couple of days goes by and I send a two and a three. I get rejected. So I'm tried to go after Etienne. I tried to offer the two and a three and I got rejected. So then I turn around and it's like, all right, well now am I, and now my team's getting hot. I got Brock Bowers and two point p- premium Trey McBride's catching 75 balls a game and two point premium. I got John o. Smith over there getting, you know, I, I got a hundred points this week between my, those three tight ends. And I got Dalton Kincaid hurt on the bench and I got Hawkinson. So I got two point 
tight end catchers everywhere. And uh, so I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to be hot, I'm in the playoffs. I'm pretty much firmly in the playoffs now. If I'm going to be in the playoffs and I got these guys that are running hot, I got quarterbacks, let's go try to get a running back because I have basically no running backs. Looking for some injuries in the running back position to bolster somebody. I got Charbonnet. I got Tank Bixby. Yeah. You know, I need a, I need a running back. I need, a, I need a, a starter to get hurt in front of me. Tank Bixby did some work for me. I got Jalen Wright. You know, I got uh, Trey Benson, you know, Estime. I, I got running backs I've been waiting on all year long. Nothing's really, pop, you know, Trey Bixby did it for a little while. So anyway, I uh, send out the offer. I go I go looking around, and I see a guy who's in the bottom of the, of the standings, and he has Joe Mixon and David Montgomery. And I was like, ooh, I really need one of those guys. And I started looking, and, you know, I got my stud tight ends, and Dalton Kincaid's on the bench. He's hurt. So I'm like, well, I don't want to give away young Dalton Kincaid in a two-point premium for one of those guys. I'm going to just see where he's at. I'm going to offer him for both of them. So I, I sent Kincaid in the third for Mixon and Montgomery. Today, is that the best-looking trade? No, it's not. Montgomery's been an absolute stud, and Mixon's been a beast when healthy. You know, So sure. that doesn't look good today. Two months ago, you that trade, would I would have never offered you that trade. Kincaid was the hottest of the hottest, and it, he was projected to get 100 catches. Mm -hmm. And in two-point tight end premium, he was going to be top five scorer. Oh, yeah. Not a tight end, a top five scorer, just like Trey McBride is and Brock Bowers is, sure. is pacing to be right now. So I know that today that's not the best offer, but two months ago you wouldn't have gotten that. And, yeah, Joe Mixon looks a lot better on Houston you know, than – he looks fantastic in that system. So I know that Joe Mixon's got a stock value up, Montgomery's stock up, Kincaid's stock down. I get it, but I just want to see where we were at. And I did offer the third in there just because I know I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be a DICK about it. So <laughs> I uh but I got rejected. And so I sent him a message and said basically, it's like, hey, you know, you got two agent running backs that I could use to win. You know hit me back here. Obviously Kincaid hasn't crushed, but immediately started catching more balls when Amari Cooper got here. This I'm reading what I sent him in a DM. So I'm like talking, I'm not really trying to talk him into it, but like enlightening him on my stance of the situation. Right. Because when, as soon as Amari Cooper got there, Kincaid did look a lot better. He had some protection from the defense. The defense weren't just, wasn't just sitting on him. He had, you had a legit receiver out there take nothing away from Keon Coleman, but he's, you know, he's a green rookie, unpolished mm -hmm. physical freak. Sure. Right. So, but Cooper is the opposite of that. Not that he can't be physical anymore, but he is the most, one of the most polished receivers in the league. So you bring that in and that, so I'm saying this, you know, it's like Kincaid hasn't crushed, but immediately started catching more balls when Cooper got there. Stud young tight end tied to Allen before the season, this trade wouldn't have been possible. What do I need to add? Question mark. That was two days ago. He hadn't got back to me, but that's literally what I'm talking to, mm -hmm. how I'm talking to my trade, you know, trade partners here. And so I look around for another set of an, another running back to try to buy because I, I got rejected and I didn't get a, a response. And our buddy Fats has been rolling with us deep for years. I sent him, and I know he likes Dalton Kincaid. Lost Fats. So I send Fats Kincaid and two thirds for Josh Jacobs and JJ McCarthy. Because why not? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. I don't want to give you Kincaid for Jacobs right this second, a 22, 23 year old tight end with, on Josh Allen's team that gets two points every time he catches the ball just because I want to try to win a championship this year on a team that's not necessarily even supposed to be in the playoffs. You know, it's a super young team. I think John o. Smith's my oldest player. It's a super young team with high upside, and I'm just scratching around looking for a running back. Well, if I could get J.J. McCarthy back with that trade, I'm like, all right, I'll throw that out there. And the reason why I wanted to really talk about this when I called Casey and told him is because Fat sent me back a, a counter offer that was completely legitimate. But in no way, shape, or form does it guarantee me a. No, there's not a trade in the world that can happen to guarantee me a championship. Sure. And outside of that, I don't want to move Brock Bowers because why would I do that? Right. So he's a you know a foundational blue chip building block sure. whatever you know all those kind of things. 
He sends me back. Now, mind you, I asked for Josh Jacobs and J.J. McCarthy for Kincaid and a couple third-round picks. He sends me back Josh Jacobs, James Conner, and George Kittle for only Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, those are three starters. That's a legit counteroffer. But in my mind, he could have sent me his whole team. (laughs) Right. You know? Like, there's, I don't know what it would have had to look like for him to get Brock Bowers off my team in a two-point tight end premium. Like, he's... In a two-point tight end premium, he might be the second or the third overall pick. And if we were starting today, and that and a, and a and a draft was about to break out, and we were about to have a startup draft today in a two-point tight end premium league, Brock Bowers might be my first overall pick. So I don't understand who he's. I don't know what he could have given me. Yeah, for me to say yes to that. But I wanted to bring it up because, and my I got my team is super hot, and Kittle's been really good. Kittle's been super hot at times. He's been really really good. Josh Jacobs is 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 super hot right now. Connor's a stud every time he steps on the field. So like he sent me three starters, but for Brock Bowers, I, I, it was a quick reject. Right. And I, I texted him back. I said, I love it. I love, I said, I love the idea, but I can't move Bowers. And then we started going back and forth on Kincaid. Yeah. And he's got a lot of Kincaid. I understand you don't want to buy more when it's on the dip. I get it. Uh, so I just, there's right now I'm literally in the middle of trying to get a running back or two for the playoff push. And just what we talked about earlier, I didn't want to trade for running backs earlier because I didn't, A, know if I could even make the playoffs. Right. But, B, I didn't want to trade for somebody that could get hurt anyway. Sure. So I'm just kind of rolling with the punches here. And as and we got one more week before the playoffs. Right. So I literally have the rest of this week and then all next week after through the games to figure out how to get a Joe Mixon or a Josh Jacobs or a you know James Conner or a, a somebody. I got a couple of backups. Maybe one of my guys in front of me gets hurt. We just saw two guys go down for the Niners this week, and we didn't even see Mason really get hurt like that. All of a sudden, he's on the IR. It's not like he got carted off mid-game. Right, right. You know, we were, everybody was dumping their fab budget on Mason two hours ago. Yeah, now it's Gorendo. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Now it's Gorendo. Yeah, my, I might go out and buy Gorendo. I, yeah. You know, so I got to buy somebody. No, so I like just, it. It's uh, bring all that up. It's good good points and good, you know, theory of, of go, what, what the mind goes through. And, you know, sometimes... You know, there's trades and things that go on out there of, you know, I know that a a strategy for you in trading with people is, hey, I'll just I'll keep I'll keep adding things to this list until it looks like I'm sending you so much where I sent you like two good players and then I filled the rest of it with junk. That wasn't necessarily what that trade was. It was good players, but he filled it up with some older guys, some mm-hmm. other things that you were like, eh, and then I got a foundational cornerstone piece here, and I'm maybe not supposed to be in this position where I'm at. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I can get, and right. this isn't something that I want to let go of, even though it was, good was, for I'm him. not saying that that was a bad offer. It was a great saying. offer for him. It was a great offer for him, and it was so good, like, I didn't double check it, but somebody could have taken that. Yeah. You know, oh, I got Kittle, and I got Josh Jacobs, and James Conner, you know? Right. It's like, so that's really why, like... There's a trade map that we're coming to, coming out with one of these years, and it would tell. And there's going to be a roadblock in front of some of these ridiculous blue chips. You know, basically just like what Casey was saying. I filled up some trades a couple, you know, two years ago with some junk to get a first round pick in one of our home leagues. And guess what was wrapped up in that junk? Nico Collins was wrapped up in that junk. I liked Nico, mm-hmm. but I saw a team that I thought was going to be bad, and he was way, and he traded me a first round pick. And then we got talking again, and he would trade me his next year's first round pick. And so I had to add some players yeah. to get that first round pick. And, and Nico was it. So it, I, I've, I've definitely, it's blown up my face multiple times. Yeah. But I mean, I enjoy that stuff, and I've had more gains than losses. But, you know, but of course I got a week of uh, running back trading in my I guess this testing the theory, because basically, I, you know, in the offseason, this was one of the type of teams where like I'm coming in here. I'm trying to build the best young point getting tight end group I can get foundationally support and, it with some wide receivers and then find running backs as I get if and once not, my team and not comes mortgage along, too much of the future. Right. And once yeah. my team comes along, what can I what can I get? Right. And so I'm literally putting that to the test. Um, it just so happens, and and Casey will be quick to nod the head here. A lot of the teams in the playoffs have good running backs. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, so crazy. those guys aren't looking to trade too many running backs right now because they're trying to go win a championship. So yeah. I don't have too many. There's in years past, 
some of the good running backs would have been out of the playoffs with you know nicked up injuries or et cetera, you know what have you and there's like there's a few obviously i just named them that it, that it's not in the playoffs that i'm going after but there's a handful of guys i guarantee you saquon barkley's team ain't sitting at the bottom no you know most likely not could right. they could be all right we got 10 minutes here let's run through these questions all right we're at a point in the season where getting these 25 picks is much more difficult than it was mid-season who are some players you're trying to trade away for the 26 or even 27 first if your window for competing is shut and closed uh, and you have some aging assets? So basically, like, who who would be... What's your thought process on 26 and 27 picks right now since maybe it's harder to get the 25 picks? I, I don't think we're going to maybe have specific examples here, but how do you handle future draft picks down the line? Is that something that you even turn your attention to at that point? Or do you just... Yeah, well, I've in the, especially in the last like two years, when we rebuilt our team in FFPC, coach, when we had those three first round picks and we went and rebuilt the entire team, trading them away, mm-hmm. right before right with that rookie fever, um, I was really blown away how much work we did by having three first round picks and how much we were able to. We didn't even make a pick in the draft because we traded them all away, um, and so that made like that made me really appreciate the value of the draft picks because and i said it before like the the college game the talent the way the offenses is played like there's just there's so much talent coming into nfl almost on a yearly basis obviously it's going to ebb and flow a little bit this year we seem to have some ridiculous running backs coming in you know yada yada so i'm interested in trying to figure out how to get these play these picks a few years in advance because they'll just be that much cheaper yeah. You know, there's no doubt about it. The rookie draft picks get more valuable as time goes. Yeah. You know, if you can put your hand on, especially 27 is like you, they're throwing picks. Yeah. You know, um, so if you can put your hand as, as I try not to get too involved in especially 27s. Well, that's what I'm saying. But right. like, I, I don't think you should be able to trade those. Yeah. I don't think those should even be on the list and you can get in your yeah. settings. If you want to pay for them, I guess, whatever. But if you're paying for them, that's different. If right. you're paying for them and you're really good, you know, if you're putting the money in the pot for the league, that's different. But I, I just don't think you should be able to. We, we just did a trade with somebody who was trying to win who we traded away Chase Brown and they gave us Zay Flowers and a 27 first. And yeah. it's like, all right, well, whatever. I don't really want this 27 first. I'd like to do something different, but I'll take it at this point because the value is good and they want to chase Brown back. So there's a little bit of something on that. I'm not going to throw out specific examples there. I feel like that's kind of hard to do unless you, you're you on Patreon. You can hit me with specific examples. True. Uh, so do that. Uh, Pickens just added to the trade block. Do you think he'll help my team projected to be a top four finish and may end up winning? It's a tight race at the top. Um, he submitted his roster it's, it's a fine roster do you think would you be trying to add george pickens right here what's the long long-term pickens from the ffd here i know we've all been big supporters of pickens because everyone you know once somebody starts telling us that guys aren't good and starts making up stupid reasons and silly shit then I, that's when my antenna goes up and i go all right well Especially i got we already like the guy i gotta dig in and go this is nonsense it's hard to not like but how do you how do you would you be looking to add pick really obviously it's going to come down to cost here it doesn't submit obviously. what the cost would be but yeah. like are you first question is are you adding pick and the second question is is like you know would you at would you buy pickings for your first i think it's first day. general first things first uh, and in his details which i appreciate it says 1.75 tight end premium so that's glowing to me it's not two it's more than one and a half. <laughs> so like I'm going to see what's in the tight end market. Obviously he says Pickens is on in the trade block. If that dude, this guy Pickens is trying to trade Pickens at a little bit below market value. Sure. I, the problem with Pickens is well documented. The man's a loose cannon. The man's an absolute loose cannon. Mm-hmm. And so he's got TJ Hawkinson, Kate Ott and George Kittle. Nice and his tight for his tight ends. That's why he's in the t- in the playoffs. That's why he's looking for to be a, a top four projected to be a top four finish. Good for you. And he's he's got Pacheco, Brian Robinson, Xavier Worthy, Chubb, Harris, Mostert on the bench, and then his starting running backs are Kamara, Bucky. Nice. He's got Juwan Jennings. He's got Bo Nix in there as a super flex starter, and then he's got Sam Darnold, Josh Jacobs, Achan Sutton, and Malik Neighbors. 
So, you know, pretty solid team. Very solid team. If that's the case, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get somebody off of that bench, maybe a, a one of those decent name, decent sounding bench players in a second round pick and going after Pickens. Depends on how bad. To, some people put uh, Pickens on the trade block and either A, they just want to see how much they can get and they want it to be a lot. They want to be a haul or B, I've done this before and I'm guilty. This is why I think that it could happen sometimes. Maybe it's not. That's Maybe that's a upper level and nobody's thinking, this dude's not thinking about that. I'll put a guy on the trade block like that just for clickbait to get him over my team looking for trades to send me some type of offer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to counter looking for somebody else and looking to try to trade away somebody yeah. else. You know, I try to drum up some business. Right. Just trying to drum up, <laughs> just trying to drum up some business. I'm trying Hating to switch. You them. know, I've, I've definitely done a, a, a clickbait trade block kind of guy before when I had really no interest in trading the guy. But I wanted a trade offer to get something going with somebody that wanted to be active for a few minutes because if you, you got to get yeah. that attention span. I wouldn't be um, going crazy trying to add pickings. But, you know, if you could add them for, you know, that's a couple of seconds and a third or if you could, you know, if, if you're pretty good and your first is, should be decent, I don't mind. I, you know, I, Dude, I if, think you could pay a late first for pickings and if, not, not if, feel too bad about it. If you can buy if you could just buy the talent. <laughs> He's a top five wide receiver in NFL. Yeah. So, and nobody, when he, nobody, right. nobody moves like he moves. If you could buy the talent, he's up there. Right. It just, you, just, you got to buy the head with it. Yeah. And it's not the best. It's not the best Yo, feeling. I, I watched an interview with Pickens and he was answering every question on point. Yeah. Like yeah. just crushing it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I never saw that before. Like I was like, this, yeah, is that just, the one where he supposedly was being rude, and but he really wasn't? No, nah, he wasn't being rude at all. They were trying to get him to like yeah. talk. They were trying to get him to brag on himself, and he just kept trying to like defer and de mm -hmm. uh, deflect that type of attention and give it to the offense and the quarterback and the team. He, yeah. I was just like, this the, doesn't look like the head case that we know. I don't, I don't know be. that he's even much of a you know. I don't know what if what if any trouble pass there is there, but like. He just look like a weird dude. When, the when you're when you're all, on when you when weird. he's when he's on the field, it's always like, God damn it, just fucking go back to the huddle. Dude. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're just it's you're doing stupid cannon shit. Part. Yeah, right. And you can see Tomlin trying to rein him in uh, throughout games here and there. So it is a little, but I mean, I'll I'll, I'll buy the production. Russell looks like he's probably going to get another shot in there next year. Why? I don't not? see why they wouldn't. I'm and he's a good fit with Russell. I'm Pac great throw fit that, with Russell. Throw that teardrop deep ball, baby. I'm Pac committed day. on Pickens. I got a suit. I got a ton of pickets. So it's harder for me to go out and buy pickets because I got a, I got him on, but more than half of my teams. Mm -hmm. So when he does great, great. When he's out there kicking the ball around, getting flags, that feels bad times 12, right? <laughs> you know, so I got that. I just, I don't need suspensions. I don't need doghouse. I don't need the coach being mad at you, you know, times more than half of my teams. Um, but that being said, you obviously got a really good team. If you're giving up a late first, I think at this point, um, he's uh, well. He's since Russell's came in, he's been like 15 points per game at minimum, maybe more. You know, every single week, he hasn't missed a week since Russell came in to throw him the ball. Yeah, he's and, been pretty solid. You know, I mean, and so if you, you got a good lineup though, so you, you know you're squeezing him in for you know probably Jawan Jennings or something. So right, <laughs> it's not like you you need to force feed it in there, but I don't I don't mind. Excuse me. And let's let's play it like this then for this guy. So, so if you get Pickens, your ability to trade Pickens away becomes a lot less fluid and liquid than the first round draft pick that mm -hmm. you might have to give up to get him. If you want to give up a two and a player off the bottom you're not using, or a two and a three and a player off the bottom that you're not you're or not using, a two and Juwan Jennings and yeah, something else, you know, know something like that, that'd be fine. Bringing in a top tier type potential player a top top tier athlete top tier wide receiver when he's not going crazy yeah I'm, I'm fine with that but you're going to have a lot a smaller market to sell because some people are just going to be out on pickings because they're scared of him or you know this or that yep. but that first round pick in a couple of months and that you know those rookies come around and then you could add a Jennings or a, that same player off the bottom plus that first round pick might get you more than pickings but that first round pick isn't going to help you win a championship this year right there's the rub right yeah, a good good point there. Uh, rebuilding with multiple firsts. Is there a situation where you trade the one one for more proven for more picks or proven players? How do you value the that pick this year? Let well, really, any year. I, the first the one one is. I can't remember a year where the one one wasn't a really really good player for as long as I've been playing Dynasty. Good point. Like you know, you might have accidentally taken Ceh. 
But, mm-hmm. you know, Jonathan Taylor's been good. He's the one, if, if you had him and you had a decent team and you added him, he won you some money probably at some mm-hmm. point, right? And as far as I, we can go back, at least the 1-1 one, one we know has been pretty good. And then if, if not all the way to the 4 or the 6. You could have missed with quarterbacks here and there, and that would really aggravate you. Yeah. If you took Trubisky over Mahomes, per se. Mm. Or, you know, if you didn't take C.J. Stroud last year. Jerry Judy over C.D. Lamb. Something like that. You could have missed here and there for sure. To me, if this is a super flex. Although Mike might be a better start Judy right now than Lamb. (laughs) Just saying. Five years later. Um, It's too late. Too early. If it's one quarterback league, I I don't see how you get to trading away Genty, right? Like, it I, don't, I think if it's a super flex league, it's going to be Genty. Exa- it's not, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah I, if, no matter but what. But you could trade Genty for a quarterback. At, at this point, what? it looks like, especially if the Cowboys take him in the first round, it's like, oh my God, here we go. Yeah, you know, it's like, the Cowboys it doesn't matter. First round co- running back forever. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. He's going to be right. The Dak's going to be handing him the ball. It's going to be a thing of beauty. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, no matter what, you're not trading that 1 1 right now. Why would you do that? Right. Well, I think that's a good good start to that answering that question of saying, <laughs> you know, I don't you you pro, you hold on to that and ride that wave for a minute until everybody gets built up. Now, you know, there's going to be a, a high and then there's going to be a low somewhere. And if then the, and then when we get back to draft time, for the most part, there'll be another high at least for X amount of picks, right? Until everybody whoever you're listening to tells you that this class sucks and it's mid and after this pick everybody sucks which almost has never been the case and anybody who's been saying that has been fucking wrong as shit they just haven't done their research and they don't check the boxes that they like or whatever and every class we've had recently has had good players through every single round that have been difference makers yeah that's a good point now if it's a really good point they always say best thing you said on the best thing you put on the mic mic. in 30 minutes (laughs) um Son of a bitch. Do better. <sighs> Do better. So, uh, well, I could go back and double down on this. Like Big Code just said a few years ago, we had three picks. I don't remember where they were. Some of them were higher end and some of them were not. We had three first round picks in an FFPC league and we didn't end up making a single pick. And coming into this year, like if you just snapshotted that roster. Ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Are we going to win this year? I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're in the hunt. We'll see. T- mm-hmm. TBD. Mm-hmm. You know, we, at, we have big. absolutely ridiculous. Like if you put it in the back end of startup draft, for the most part, it'd be really hard to draft that team. Impossible. Um, without trading a whole bunch of stuff away. Mm-hmm. So, yes, the answer is, you know, I, I will absolutely. I don't need to make those picks, especially if I'm barren at everywhere else like you can probably get more for trading those picks away than just making that singular draft pick now if they come out and they're marvin harrison or rather malik neighbors right away then you could get probably more, triple yeah. down on that profit but then you you can eliminate some of the risk by taking some of the known you know in there which you know we we traded for guys like cd lamb puka mark andrews you know big, big time players i think who we drafted puka but you're right maybe yeah, yeah. i don't remember but you know, we we went out and got really good players at a bunch of different positions and shored up the lineup from top to bottom. Didn't make any of those picks. And is it as fun when you're in on the clock? No, right. uh, but it's fun to be in the rookie draft. And and listen, if you're not gonna get if you're not gonna get overpaid for those picks, then make the picks. Mm-hmm. But that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to exploit rookie fever and get overpaid for good players. Uh, that people may be just slightly, you know, like if you if buying Nico Collins for any first last year would have been gangbusters mm-hmm. as soon as the season started, right? Yep. So that's Absolutely. what you're inevitably trying to do. We bought low on CD Lamb whenever we did that because we people were, on, were we bought low on uh, uh, were out. Right? Nico Collins. Uh, that bought so, low on Nico. We bought Nico in that league. Yeah. So the um that where I was going just a second ago was with that for, with that one one, the unicorn offer might come across the table. You know, where, you you know, somebody might offer you this time last year, you know, Jamar Chase or a Justin Jefferson or somebody might come up. Like last year, Jamar Chase was down. This year, right, right now, like the last you couple of weeks. Get, you can't get Jamar Chase. You can't get Jamar Chase now because right. it, because he's been crushing it. And, you know, uh, he's he's doing his thing. Joe Burrow's hot, red hot. 
you know, hottest quarterback in the league the last six weeks or something like that. Well, X, you know, 15 touchdowns, two picks or something crazy. But like Justin Jefferson's down right this minute. Him and Sam hadn't been able to get where they wanted to be the last couple of weeks. He did have a good week this week, but you know, there was a couple of weeks there where Justin Jefferson, obviously career lows two weeks ago, the week before that, not too great. You know, the, the unicorn offer could come around for the one, one early enough. I'm not trying to trade away any first round picks right now because it's just going to get way more expensive. And like you said, people come around, oh, and then they lose their value. They don't lose their value. Once the anticipation of that comes up, people are people are excited. They're ready to do some shit. They they want to they want to draft. They want to pick these mm-hmm. new players. So all right, last question. Not sure if you've answered this before, but where do you rank Penix versus um assuming it's Shador Sanders as prospects? I think Penix is if Penix was in this class, he'd be number one. People are already questioning this quarterback class. I think it's basically Shador and Cam Ward right now. Mm -hmm. And I like Shador a lot. I think I got no problem drafting Shador or Cam Ward as a super flex option. Probably take Genty first um, at this point. And then maybe we'll talk about those two guys uh, or whether you take Tet McMillan in that second spot, TBD. Um, But I think Penix, for me, would probably be the number one quarterback, you know, in, in this class uh, i already really it's unfair for a question for me because i already really like Penix more than most smash yeah. the table for him that That's entire true. off season and then you know he got the capital and now he's sitting and he's in a good spot and now kirk's not playing well and it's hey do they trade kirk do they sit kirk next year what's going on you know right how long until you get the Penix? but it's not and i, I don't think it's it's like um a country mile between Penix and Sanders. I just, I feel really comfortable with what Penix can do in all the games that he's played and the situations that he's been in. Mm-hmm. And Shador's played a lot of football and he's been excellent. You give him some protection, he can put balls in buckets, he can move around with the legs. Well, I'm just now so. getting into my prospects stuff. So I don't know as much about Sanders. I obviously, big Penix guy, mainly because you told me to, to pay attention to him, but it's not that big. What? You said you're a big. Penix guy. Who's not a, who's not big? Your Penix. Penix. I'm not big on Penix. He was Your Penix is not that big. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Not as good of a joke as you thought it was. <laughs> um Sanders oh, well, t- t- Time out right. Time out real quick and I'll okay. let you get back to it. Okay. <laughs> I hate and I was going to just pretend that it was a question of what's your what do you hate in fantasy football and I was going to answer it but I fucking cannot stand when people use pun names in fucking fantasy football it is the dumbest shit ever they're never original they're never funny whatever you always look like a fucking clown <laughs> Samaj- i immediately i immediately yeah because there's not a million samaj a trois there fucking, can't be i came I, up with it no you didn't even if you think you did there's five million other ones <laughs> out there like it's so david's dumb. johnson it's so unoriginal and i as soon as i see that i'm like oh that's a mark right there <laughs> that's a mark pull over that like, ass to fan it's just like what are we doing yeah stop that's, that's, it it's unoriginal that's the mark. like it's I like it. get rid of it i hate it so much all right <laughs> I like anyway it. I like it. what was he even talking but if you're one of the cool small kids Phoenix. if you're one of the cool kids you name your team the four horsemen and then you nickname your four awesome tight ends Rick Flair, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and, and at least there's some thought and some originality that went into this process. Yeah, I'm fine with Barry that. Wyndham. I'm like, I got, oh. t- I got Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, <laughs> which were the enforcers for the four four horsemen. Rick Flair was the guy up front talking. Of course, Arn Anderson and Rick and, and Tully Blanchard were the enforcers, and they were the best. Yeah, in the late '80s, early '90s, and then Barry Windham because that fourth four horseman kind of floated around. But when Barry Windham was in there, he was a beast. They, then they brought in Lex Luger a little bit later. Anyway, I saw some really good questions about Sanders the other day. So that being said, I have, I'm have really just getting started on, on this year's stuff. But I think Penix is pretty damn safe. I think that obviously the there's some backlash on whether, if, if you're looking at the right sources, whether Raheem Morris was the right hire or not. I think if, when you listen to Raheem Morris talk, you understand why he got the job. When you see what's going on with the Falcons, defense ain't doing nothing. Offense is up and down. Well, it's like, they oh, got a, well what they are got we doing a, around They got here? a guy who's never called an offense before, and they got a, a second head coach. He's been a head coach before, I yeah, guess, for a minute. But, was. like, they also they don't have the pieces on defense. He inherited that defense. It's not He he hasn't built that defense. Like, they tried in the offseason to bring in some pass rush. They just don't have any pass rush. They got like, no pass rush. They, they, they just they can't get after you. It's mm-hmm. it's And that's just a recipe for disaster in this league. And Kirk's been up and down, which Kirk does. But Kirk's been... 
Kirk was really Kirk's the reason they won some games too now. No doubt. Don't get it twisted. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Right. And no Kirk's doubt. not playing excellent right now. And mm-hmm. you know, he he'll, he'll well, get an easy day to pick on Kirk. Today. He'll have a he'll have this game that he just had Four picks once twice a year. Yeah. And that you know, so don't need that. You don't like that. Don't like that. <laughs> Hate but that. Penix right now for me. So all right, let's wrap this up. We appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, five star review if you're not if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes. Come on, go what ahead are you doing? Go ahead and hit that it, button man. real quick. Just tap it. And five dollar holler over on Patreon. You get extra episodes over there. You get the Discord. There's a free one and a five dollar one. Come check all that out. And uh, be sure to keep it locked and loaded. We'll, we'll be doing uh, the weekend review here as football kind of keeps going on, and we got plenty of future stuff, uh, prospects, and comparing what my picks are worth, and all sorts of fun stuff. Mocks, mocks, mocks. Um, yeah, tonight so, was a little. This this show was a little precursor. Yeah, be it. sure Some to longer, drawn out shows of each of those individual questions. Be sure to keep it locked and loaded. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>